Thank the Lord for being here, for his presence being in this place. And um, just let us, letting us come before a holy God and, and be in his presence and bathe in his grace, amen, and in his peace. So tonight, uh, as you can tell, in between the victory is what I titled the message tonight. For every single one of you that is on the other side, I bless you. May God keep you. May God protect you. May God watch over you and may he shine his face upon you tonight and every single day of your life for the rest of your life. So tonight, I want to tell you that, um, that the Lord gave me this message today for every single one of y'all. And let me tell you, um, I thank God for giving me the opportunity and for speaking to me today. Um, one of the things that I always say, if, it, if he doesn't speak, I don't talk. I don't open my mouth. And man, if he doesn't say something, I am not coming online. And today he gave me the opportunity to come before you um, and give you a good message. So without going further into um, talking and rambling on, uh, please go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, that's where we're going to start tonight, the message. And I want you to really hear what God has to say tonight. We are going to go into the book of Exodus um, to give you some understanding. So just go with me to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 9. And this is what it says. For you remember, brethren, our labor, our, our labor excuse me, and toil. For laboring night and day, that we work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of, whole, of how holy, of how holy, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believe. For you know that we dealt with each of you as the Father deals with his own children, encouraging, confronting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continu continually because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. Before I even talk about this, let's, let's, let's go um, into 1 Timothy. Let's go into 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. So today the Lord was saying to me, there is a lot of you that are starting to uh, believe in the Word of God, that are starting to walk and understand the Word of God. But I want you to understand that you are in, in between two places. The Lord was telling me today, you're not where you used to be as far as sinning and out in the world, but you're not where you're going to be. You're not at the place that God wants you to be. So before I get to talking about what the Lord has for us today, I want you to go into the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 17, and this is where the meat of our message tonight is going to be. And I want you to see how God is involved in every single one of our lives. You're not where you used to be. You're not in the world anymore. You're not doing the things of the world anymore. God is dealing with you in your walk with him. But you're not where you need to be either. And so the Lord gave me this message for every single one of you out there. That you are believing God. You are trusting God. You are beginning to walk the word of God and trying to maintain yourself, separate yourself, and maintain your, your family separated and holy before the Lord. And the Lord has a message for you tonight. So go with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 17, starting in verse 8. Then this is what it says. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek 
Tomorrow, I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he laid down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands on one uh, one on one side and the other on the other side and his hand was steady until he until the going down of the sun so Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword then the Lord said to Moses write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out blot out the, re the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against, against the Am Amalekites from generation to generation. What I want you to understand tonight is this. When you are trying to walk in the ways of God, when you are trying to continue in what God has already said to you, when you are trying to go from the place that you used to be, meaning the place of sin, the place of the world, the place of of um, evil, the place of hatred, the place of uh, resentment and bitterness, you are trying to come out of that place where I, I want you to understand that when God is talking about Egypt, God is talking about a place of religion. God is talking about a place of hatred. God is talking about a place that taught you things that weren't necessarily right. God is talking about a place where you were bound and doing things that you knew was wrong. And so God is leading a lot of people out of those places. He's leading a lot of people out of places where you knew you did something wrong and he's bringing you out from it. Okay. And God is walking you down through this wilderness. I want you to understand that the wilderness is not a bad place. The wilderness is a place where God is removing things that you were taught that were wrong from the beginning. The wilderness is a place where God is uh, uh, um, chopping away, where God is taking away some of the traditions, some of the beliefs, some of the taught things that have been so ingrained inside of you from the from the beginning when you were born born onto this earth, okay, onto onto the earth, and so God is bringing you out of that. God is teaching you the right way of doing things. God is removing. All that stuff that ain't necessarily true, that ain't necessarily right, and taking you into a new place. But what I want you to understand is the word Amalek in here, this was a group of people that were absolutely evil. These people were absolutely evil in all they did. And they decided to come together with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, okay, the prince of Egypt, to take down the children of Israel. They came together to stop them in the middle of the wilderness before they reached Mount Sinai. Um, I want you to understand this. Um, in the word of God, it talked about the word remit, rid, uh, let me go back. Rid, Rididim? Rephidim, I'm sorry. R-E-F-H-I-D-I-M. Okay? This word means a place of stop, and it is an in-between place. What in-between place are you talking about, Almighty? I am talking about the in-between place between the wilderness of sin, the place where you are used to sinning, the place that you are used to doing the wrong thing, the place that you used to lying, okay? Um, the wilderness of sin and the wilderness of Sinai. Now, this is what I need you to understand in this about the between these two places, okay? 
What I need you to understand about these two places is this. The place of sin is the place where you are bound. The place that God is trying to take you is the, is the place where you are free, but where God can talk to you and can speak to you freely. I want you to understand that the place that you are in between, you are between the breaking completely of sin and the reaching of God's absolute and pure presence in your life, where you can hear the spirit of the living God talk to you freely, where you can hear, you know, how to walk this thing out correctly for your family, for your children, and for those that come after you. So you are in an in-between place. So the children of Israel found themselves in the in-between the wilderness. They had already been free from Egypt, but God was chopping away. God was dealing with all of their sin nature, all of the things that they were taught under Egypt for 470 years, okay? So God was dealing with them in the wilderness about that to get that away from them, take that away from them, shed it away from the way of life. And they were on their way to Mount Sinai. But in between those two places, they found Amalek. And Amalek is a absolutely evil people. They don't care about how you feel. They didn't care about where you came from. They don't care about where you're going. All they care about is destroying you. All they care about is taking you out of the way. But one of the things that I want you to understand about this is this. The meaning of the word Amalek. The meaning of the word Amalek, okay, it is pure evil. It is the evil it represents, excuse me, the evil eye of doubt. It is the place where most of us begin to question whether it is or is not. Whether God is going to do or God is not going to do. Whether God is going to answer or God is not going to answer. And so they found themselves in between this place trying to fight whether God is going to take them to the promised land. For every single one of you that is connected, let me tell you something. Every single one of us that lives and breathe come to a place sometimes of doubt. Where doubt, you begin to question, where am I going? What is the purpose? Why am I doing this? You begin to question who you are, what you're doing, where you're going, and what for. Every single one of us get to that place. And so the Lord wanted me to tell you tonight, you are an in-between place. However, I want you to understand something. Yahweh, the Lord, the living God, is your banner. The Lord, the living God, is going to stand up on your behalf. And the Word of God says that the children of Israel, when they figured out, that Moses, that every time Moses put his hands down, that they were, get they were getting defeated by Amalek. Every time Moses um, was tired of, 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 um, of the, the teaching, of the praising, because he couldn't hold his arms up anymore, then they realized, wait a minute. Every time Moses put his, put his hands down, we began to lose the battle. But every time Moses puts his hands up, we prevail against our enemy. We prevail against Amalek. We prevail. So guess what? Moses is getting tired. Not a problem. We are going to hold his arms up. Because we need to win this war. We need to win this battle. So what they decided to do was Aaron and her decided we are going to hold his arms up. So they placed two rocks underneath each one of Moses' arms to praise the living God so that they could win the battle. What I want to tell you tonight is when you feel like you are on the losing end, when you feel like you can't go forward anymore, when you feel like you're tired, when you feel like you're questioning where am I going, what am I doing, and what for, when you feel like there's just not enough of you to go around, the Lord is telling you, praise me anyway, worship me anyway, call on my name anyway, because I want to show you that, that I am your banner. 
I want to show you that the power that flows through you, that the abilities that I have given you, they don't come just out of you. There is something on the inside of you that says, I got it. Just keep moving forward. Just keep praising me. Just keep calling me. Just keep looking for me. So the Lord wanted me to tell you tonight, for every single one of you that is listening, I don't know if this message is for you, Mary, uh, it could be that this message is just for me, and that is A-okay with me, amen? But if this message is for you, the Lord is telling you tonight, you are an in-between place. You're not where you used to be, filled with sin and in the world, but you're not in Mount Sinai either. You haven't been able to hear from me clearly. You haven't been able to hear my voice. You haven't been able to, to hear my clear instructions. And the Lord is telling you tonight, tonight that is going to be over. You are not going to be in, in between anymore. Just raise your hands. Just praise me anyway. Like Moses did in the, in the wilderness. He raised his hands and he began to praise God anyway. And when he began to praise God anyway in that process, then God answered. And they were able to demolish their enemy. They were able to come against their enemy and bring them down. So the Lord is telling you tonight, whatever circumstances you find yourself in tonight, whatever situation you are confronting tonight, whatever is standing in front of you so that you cannot move forward to the place that God wants you to be, to the place that God has called you to be, to the place that God can clearly speak to you where you can hear the voice of the living God. God is telling you, just praise me, just pray, raise your hands and praise me because I am Jehovah Nissi. I am your banner, says the Lord. I am the one that is going to stand up and fight for you. Just praise me anyway. So tonight the Lord wanted me to tell you that you are an in-between place right now. And that don't worry about who your enemy is. Amalek is going to fall. Amalek, it is the place where you have doubts about what God is doing in your life and on your behalf. And the Lord is telling you tonight, praise me anyway. Because you are going to have the victory. Just like Moses and the children of Israel at that time had the victory against Amalek, their enemy, so they would not get to Mount Sinai. Sinai is the place where you can hear the instructions of the Lord clearly, without filter. And God is telling every single one of us tonight, including myself, praise me anyway. I know where you are and I know where I'm taking you. Praise me anyway. Because you are an in-between. You're not in sin anymore. You're not doing the wrong things. You're not evil anymore. You're not plotting and doing things that you know you're not supposed to be doing. But you're not where you're going either. You're not at the place that God wants you to be either. So tonight, the Lord gave me this message to tell you. Praise me anyway. Raise your hands anyway because you're still going to have the victory. The God that we serve never loses a battle. Never loses a battle. You can go from Genesis through Revelation and the God that we serve have never lost a battle. Not once. And he's not going to start now. So the Lord wanted me to tell you. You are going to have the victory. You're not where you used to be, but you're not where I need you to be either. And that's okay, because I am in the midst. And tonight, the Lord is saying, that blocking, that thing that keeps standing in between you and the place that he wants you to be, that thing that keeps blocking you, the Lord says, tonight, that's going to be over. That is going to be over, because I am Jehovah Nisi. I am the God, your banner. I am that raises up the flags and says, enough. So the Lord is telling you tonight, I'm on your side. Trust me. 
trust me. Continue to walk in my ways. Continue to do the right thing. Go with me to Judges chapter uh, chapter 5, excuse me. Judges chapter 5, verse, starting in verse 4. Lord, when you went out from Seir, Seir, when you marched from the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens poured. The clouds also poured water. The mountains gushed before the Lord. This Sinai before the Lord God of Israel. So God is saying, when I stand up and when I speak, everything trembles. Everything falls. Everything stops. There's a peace that overwhelms the heavens, that overwhelms your house, that overwhelms your mind when the Lord speaks. Go with me to Psalm 68, starting in verse 8. The earth shook. The heavens also dropped rain at the presence of God. Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You, O oh God, sent a plentiful rain, whereby you confirm your inheritance when it was weary. Your congregation dwell in it. You, O oh God, provided for your goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaim it. Kings of armies flee. They f kings of armies, they flee. And she who remains at home devise the spoil. Though you lie down among the sheephold, you will be like the wings of the dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. When the, when the Almighty scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow falling from Mount Salmon. What am I telling you tonight? What I'm telling you tonight is this. The Lord says, praise him anyway. When you are in between the place that you used to be, in between the place that you're going, God says, raise your hands. Worship me anyway. I know you're tired. I know you're weary. I know you're exhausted. But guess what? I am Jehovah, your banner. I am the one that has the last word. I am the one that sustains you. I am the one that hears you. I am the one that's with you every moment, every second of your day. I am, says the Lord. So tonight, for every single one of you that is connected tonight on the other side, I bless you. I bless you with the blessings of my God, Yahweh. I encourage you tonight. And I tell you, God says, you're not where you used to be, but you're not where I want you to be. And that's okay. Because I have the victory. I am Jehovah Nissi. I am the God that claims the victory. So tonight the Lord says, it is done. The victory is yours. But armor yourself. Put the armor of the Spirit. Cover yourself in the Spirit of the living God, says the Lord. Praise, worship, fills the atmosphere with His presence and arms you with weapons of warfare against your enemy whether that enemy is doubt whether that enemy is fear whether that enemy is victimization whether that enemy is making you feel like you have been defeated the God that you serve never loses a battle so put that in your mindset tonight the God that I serve never loses a battle and he always has the victory so for every single one of you tonight, that is my message. In between the victory, you are in between. Armor yourself. Get your weapons. Get your armor. Get in the spirit. And remind yourself, the God that I serve never loses a battle. He is victorious 
every single time. So may God bless you. May God keep you. May he shine his face upon you and give you his peace. There's no better place to be than to be in the peace of Almighty God. So, y'all have a good night. I love you, every single one of you. I'm not sure who's all connected on the other side. I saw a whole bunch of people connect, but may God bless you and keep you and protect you and guide you wherever you go. And may he help you with everything that you put your hands to. Amen. I will talk to you guys later.